Okay, welcome back. In this video, I'm going to show you how to set up your viewport display in order to be able to work with subdies a little bit better, or actually to be able to work with subdies at all. And this is really important, so you might want to sit up and pay attention for this video. All right, let's go over here to primitive. I'm going to go to polygon mesh and create a cube so we can start to create our sub D. Close that PPG, we don't need it. Hit F12 over here in this window. That way you can expand it out to a full maximized viewport. I'm going to switch over to shaded view and hit G on the keyboard to turn off the grid like we did before. Okay, let's create our sub D. Let's go over here to create poly mesh subdivision. Let's pin this PPG down. There's our sub D. Now we have a problem. If we hide the cube, we can see the sub D, which is great. But we don't want to work on the sub D. We need to be able to work on the cube to be able to control the sub D underneath. So how can we do that if the cube is in the way and doesn't let us see the sub D? And if we get rid of the cube, now we can't see the cube that we need, only the sub D. So having it on doesn't work, and having it off obviously doesn't work either. We need some kind of a compromise or somehow some way of having our cake and eating it too. Fortunately, Softimatch XSI allows you to do that. Mmm, that's tasty. Okay, so how do we do that? Well, it's pretty simple actually. If we go down here, you're going to see three sets of buttons. Now, this first one is pushed in as you can see. That's the one that tells XSI to switch the left part of the interface into this main command, uh, this main toolbar over here. Now, there's two other buttons, one with a paintbrush. Now, if you click on that one, it's going to open up the paint tools, the weight, the weight paint tools. And this isn't what you want to use. So let's go over here and click on this other symbol that has a sort of paint palette that artists use. And now we're going to get another menu. This is the menu that we want. What this menu allows us to do is to customize the way that we view whatever object is in our viewport. So down here under display types, we have all these different buttons with different letters. Each letter stands for a different shading mode. Basically, the same shading modes that are up here when you go to the shaded menu. You see how you can pick wireframe, bounding box, constant, shaded, textured, so on and so forth? Well, these buttons pertain to those over here, essentially activating the same thing in XSI. So, what does all this weird stuff mean that I'm just regurgitating out here? Well, let me show you with a visual example. If we want to put this cube at wireframe mode while keeping the sub D underneath in shaded mode, all we have to do is click on this W here which stands for wireframe. XSI now goes into something called a pick session and asks us to pick something. And whatever we pick is going to be turned into wireframe mode. So let's pick the cube. Then let's right click to end that and you'll notice absolutely nothing happened. Well, this is because something weird's going on. No, actually it's not, I'm kidding. If you go up here to shaded options, You'll notice that by default, there's a check mark on this option that says Override Object Properties. What that means is that no matter what object properties you set for this cube, it's always going to be visible in whatever options you have selected here in this shaded menu, basically overriding all of these display types over here on the left. So what we need to do is uncheck that, and now you'll notice that something very awesome happens. The cube goes into wireframe mode, the sub D stays in shaded mode, basically giving us the best of both worlds, essentially exercise handing us our cake and allowing us to eat it too, which is fantastic. Okay, now this isn't a very nice looking cake, but it's a sub D, so let's just work with it. So that's one way to be able to view the sub D. So now you can actually work on the cube while watching the sub D at the same exact time, which is the ideal way, of course and basically the main way of working with sub D's. Let me show you another way how to set up the display types. What I'm going to do is I'm going to go over here to this D button which stands for default and I'm going to select the cube basically knocking it back to its default view which is shaded view. What I'm going to do is go over here to selection while the cube is selected and you notice that the cube is up here and all the nodes underneath it show up in this list. What we want to do is go to the display node, which is located right here. Click on this little gradient, this gray square icon next to it, and that opens up a PPG window, a property page window. 
for the display types of this cube. All we have to do is go up here to where it says static selected, switch it from automatic to wireframe mode. But you notice that when I move around in my camera, this happens. Every time my camera is still and I let go, it goes into the correct view mode, which is wireframe. When I move it, it becomes shaded again. I don't want it to do that behavior because it's actually kind of annoying. If you like it, you can keep it that way. But I'm going to show you how to change that. What you do is go down here to this handy little button that says copy static selected mode to all. And what's going to happen is whatever mode you have selected here in the first slot, which in this case is wireframe, is going to be copied onto all these other options. So you don't have to go to each and every one and select wireframe uh, nine times. Just click on this and there we go. Everything switched to wireframe. Now let me close that PPG. Now you'll see that no matter where I move, no matter what I do with my camera and my viewport, the wireframe mode stays in wireframe mode all the time. So that's another quick way to go ahead and set up the display type for this sub D object. So now we can see through the cube while having the cube visible in some way. And we can see the sub D and see what changes happen to the sub D as we edit the cube. So that does it for setting up the custom display type for this sub D object. In the next video, we'll pick up where I left off right here.